All right. Well, hello and welcome back to Microbelm Live, your source for tips, tricks, and discussions related to Microbelm software and the woodworking industry. We are broadcasting to you uh, live once again from Southern Oregon at the headquarters of Microbelm Software. And this week, we are going to be talking about ways to streamline your drafting with Microbelm's AutoCAD-based software. And we're going to be learning how to set up your AutoCAD environment, uh, work through some of the process re processes related to customizing your Microbelm settings and some and more. Uh, and here to help us with today's instruction is Amy Reisenauer, a longtime Microbelm user and current service tech out of the North Carolina area. Hello, everybody. And also today, we've invited a special guest from Northwestern Design, Thomas Christopher. So glad to have you here as well, Thomas. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. All right. So before we get into the meat of today's topic and a quick chat with Thomas, and for the sake of those who may be joining us for the first time, let's just cover the basics of how our webinar will work today. Your mics have been muted, as you might have found out by now, but we do want to hear from you. Uh, so if you're joining us here on our Zoom platform, you can ask a question at any time using the question and answer UI accessed by clicking that green little button there on the center of your screen in that control bar. You can also chat with us um, and others tuned in here today using the chat window, which should also be pretty easy to find there in the control bar as well. And you can also, uh, if you're jo joining us from our YouTube live stream, you can just use those comments there, uh, post those comments and we will get back to you there um, uh, as well. And as usual, we are recording this episode and you can find this one as well as all the other live episodes that we've done uh, posted on our website at microbellum.com forward slash live. All right, well, let's get into the topic you all came here to talk about and to uh, tune in for. Uh, and that is the topic of drafting and learning new ways to streamline the way you draft. We all know that there's a wide variety of uh, software out there for drafting, but when it comes down to it, there's really only one they all try to emulate, and that's AutoCAD. It's the number one software used by architects, and it's a leading tool in our industry as well. Uh, and before we get into the technical piece of our webinar, we just wanted to take a few moments to talk with our guest, Thomas, uh, from Northwestern Design, about his use of AutoCAD and how he streamlined their drafting to production processes using Microbelm. So, Thomas, thanks again for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so tell us a little bit about Northwestern Design. What do you do there, and how long has Northwestern Design been around? Well, uh, NWD, or Northwestern Design, was established in 1981 in Rohnert Park, California. Uh, we moved to our current location here in Grants Pass, Oregon, in 1992. We supply custom architectural millwork and casework to the commercial market with an annual sales of about $10 million. Uh, in addition to our 45,000 square foot of manufacturing and warehouse space, we also have uh, about 5,000 square feet dedicated to our project management and engineering department as well. We use the state-of-the-art software, which is Microbellum and AutoCAD, obviously, and uh, our machinery that enables us to keep pace with the, uh, with the ever-changing marketplace as well. Um, as I've said already, my name is Thomas Christopher. I'm the senior project engineer here at Northwestern Design. Uh, I, I'm the head of our engineering department. I oversee uh, the other project engineers. I assist with our project managers by supporting them with various aspects of their projects. It could be anything from nesting shapes and pieces, sending them to the saws, the CNCs. Sometimes we'll do some 3D drawings, um, you know, just general drafting, or if I need to help communicate with different parts of the project team on the job site or whatever. Um, I also work pretty close with their fabrication department and work pretty close with our CNC operators and our saw operators as well. And so as an AutoCAD user, how much of your time is spent drafting with AutoCAD, just plain old Auto AutoCAD as opposed to using some of the tools and features within your Microbelm software? You know, I've asked this question to some of our project engineers and uh, the consensus is that about 80% of what we do here requires the use of the standard AutoCAD functionality. Mm -hmm. um, we're a one-off type shop and we're always doing custom pieces for projects. Most of these items are drawn freehand and then we engineer it later for, uh, for release or for fabrication after approval of the drawings. Um, if all we did was just straight boxes, then uh, that percentage would go down because Microbellum has the automation built into it that allows us to uh, take advantage of the, the streamlined process. 
Mm -hmm. And so that automation, I think we had a number of people wanting to know kind of what that means in terms of being automated. And in our, our world, we call that uh, 2D drawing tokens. And so we utilize those features within the software to kind of tell AutoCAD what to do in a uh, kind of repeatable way. And so that's what you're referring to in terms of the automation. So what did that look like in terms of the setup? Well, it took us uh, probably about three months off and on to get the drawing tokens to look the way that we wanted them. Um, and that what you're seeing there on that screen and that's the dimensions, the, the, the FE, the finished ends, the, the item numbers, the, the, some of the text on there, um, you know, but we're, we're, always, uh, we're always looking to improve upon that. But uh, it definitely helps. We don't, I mean, we don't have to think about that. You know, that's one less thing mm -hmm. that we have to worry about or think about, so. Right. Yeah, so in terms of, uh, you mentioned the, the three month investment um, I mean, I had a question here prepared for you in terms of, you know, what's your return on investment? Have you, what kind of return on investment have you seen? And I think that's obvious uh, with the, the ability to automatically add all of these things as you, as you've been talking about. Correct. You know, it's, um, you know, it saves our draftsmen hours of time, not having to recreate the same thing over and over and over again, you know, typing out all the text stringing all your dimensions along, the hatching, the machining, you know, just everything you see on that page there was pretty much done through the drawing tokens that we have set up within our products. Nice. So another question for you related to the fact that you're dealing with architects all the time. I think when we spoke, you're dealing with jobs of, you know, up anywhere from $50,000 to over a million dollars in, in terms of the, the projects. And so, uh, what advantage does being an AutoCAD based software like Microvelm is give you? What do you think that, what, what's the advantage for you? Well, for us, I think the main advantage of utilizing AutoCAD is the fact that the architects can send us their AutoCAD background drawings. And we can then take those particular floor plans or elevations or whatever have you, and we can incorporate them directly into our shop drawings without having to recreate what we see on a PDF drawing. Um, it helps speed up our drafting process by minimizing what we have to recreate so we can take a, a snippet of their floor plan and draw right on top of that nice so importing that, the pdfs and, yeah importing the pdfs and just drawing right over the top of it so you can minimizing your, your risk for error as well i'd imagine yeah or scaling you know printed mm -hmm. drawings or trying to you know pull up another software to do a takeoff to dimension a line like i know blue beam is able to do that mm-hmm um, we can forgo all of that. Right. And so one other question, we've seen some examples of your 2D drawings, but are, are you mainly drawing in 2D um, and how much of your work maybe is on the 3D side? I would say that we're, we're probably about 95% 2D. Um, mm -hmm. We do find some advantages for having 3D capabilities. Mm -hmm. For instance, this particular page is a standard sheet that we include with all of our shop drawings when we submit it to the architects. It helps identify what surfaces are what and how we're defining what surfaces get finished with what particular, you know, finish. Mm -hmm. um, other, other aspects of the 3D world is uh, we will uh, be able to uh, maybe draw more complex items that just don't quite make sense in 2D mm -hmm. or it's hard to portray how those pieces interact. Um, but it's a case by case basis. We're, we're mostly 2D though. Right. So in the case of, um, you know, like what you talked about that, that I think you said 95% or 90% of your projects are drawn in 2D and some in 3D, but in terms of the submittals, do you have one person involved from the start to finish or do you involve multiple people? I think that was a question that came in from the, um, or similar one came in from the registration process as well. A user wanted to know that. Um, you know, it kind of depends on the project. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say a majority of our projects, we have a single draft person who, who will work on it from start to finish. Mm -hmm. um, some projects do require the use of maybe two or more people, and we'll, we'll be able to split uh, the work between two people. Um, we'll create a couple of different files within the filing structure that is provided with Microvellum, so we can have two people working on the same project at the same time. And as long as, as long as we coordinate with each other, it's, it's never really an issue. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. That's, that's something that I, I know that a lot of our users do. It's pretty, pretty common. 
Um, let's see here. There's another question here. And, and by the way, for those of you listening in, if you have a question for Thomas and his process, uh, go ahead and chat, uh, ch uh, enter it there in the question and answer panel and we'll see if we can get to it. Um, just want to take a few more minutes though here and get to another question related to some of the custom work that you guys do. Um, actually, before I do do that, there was one other question that came in. Looking back at your entire process, what would you say that are the top benefits for using microvellum for your drafting process, drafting to production process? So I've kind of narrowed this down to the three top mm -hmm. benefits. And the first one is automation. We save a lot of time drafting because our library products are able to be brought into our floor plans fairly effortlessly. Our floor plans are then able to be elevated with little to no modifications, and then our sections and details are able to be cut with no modifications or very little modifications if needed at all. Um, the second main advantage that I see that we use is one-time entering. So when we insert our cabinets, we're able to keep all of that information in one place uh, without having to utilize outside software. We're able to do material takeoffs, optimize, optimize our material yields, and send that data to our various machines without having to ever change software. Nice. And then the, the third option is uh, custom-shaped nesting. We exploit the, advantage of the, uh, the advantages of the solid model analyzer feature that's built into microvellum. We're able to draw 3D items, apply material to it, and then optimize that to our CNC machines. It saves us mm -hmm. so much time versus right. the old school way of having to draw it all by hand. Yeah, definitely. Those are, those are some good, good examples there, good uh, benefits. Uh, there were some questions coming in. I think this, uh, some of these would be pretty good to answer. One from um, a topic we had at the beginning there about the, the tokens, the 2D drawing tokens. They ask, where did you go to get your training for, those to for the, how to do it? Well, we had a gentleman here who was pretty well versed um, and uh, he trained me and he got his training from Microvellum. Right. I'm not, can't remember exactly who, but he, he trained me. And so I, I'm, you know, and I'm still learning myself, but mm -hmm. um, so it was mostly in-house for me specifically. Right. Right. So, yeah, and this is a topic too, that we're going to be getting to later on here in the uh, discussion once Amy gets uh, um, on board with her with the instruction that she's going to be providing. Uh, there's another question that came in from Chris. He wants to know, were you a 6.7 user? And if so, do you see an increase in speed with the newer version? Uh, we were a previous 6.7 user, um, and it definitely is uh, much faster than the than the old 6.7 version. Um, there's a lot more there's a lot more features that you would have to manually do that is now maybe more streamlined in the newer mm -hmm. version than in the old 6.7 version. The, the nesting is a lot faster. The, the inserting, the drawing tokens are a lot more streamlined. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Rodrigo, leaders with notes can be added as tokens. Yes, that is true. Linda Elb wants to know, do you use auto labeling? I do not believe you have an auto labeling capable CNC machine. Uh, no, our saw has uh, label has a printer next to it that the saw operator will print the mm -hmm. labels as he's cutting them from the saw, but I don't think our CNC does. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, yeah, good questions. Keep them rolling in, but I did want to get to another segment here um, of, of my round of questions for you, and it has to do with the 3D work that you do. Um, let's see here, and, and it has to do with custom products. Um, so we've seen some examples of some of the standard case work, but we wanted to know how you approach the custom products like die walls or reception areas. And you'd sent over this packet. This is a release packet I'm going to pull up now with a project that you have actually being installed at this moment. For this particular one, we, uh, we had we actually had somebody go out with a, uh, with a laser and mm -hmm. measure this wall. This is actually a soffit, so it's actually hanging from the ceiling more or less. And uh, they shot it with a laser, and then we had to kind of bring that, those, those data points into, our, uh, into AutoCAD, and we pieced them together. We had to smooth out some lines, but um, from there, we were able to create the die wall more or less, and figure out how we were going to attach it. Uh, then we, for this one, I didn't use anything super fancy. I know that uh, Microvellum has that extruded product builder. Uh, for, th for this one, I use Solid Mono Analyzer. Um, and if you keep scrolling down, you'll be able to see that 3D model down there. 
and uh, there's the section. So it's actually hanging off the cleats. And Clay, actually, I sent you some uh, install photos of this particular piece here as well. So I don't know if you have those yet, but it'll help kind of visualize this a little bit more. So we were able to get all of the plates drawn, turned them into 3D parts using the solid model, solid, uh, solid model analyzer, and then we were able to optimize it and send it straight to the CNC. And it was just basically a big puzzle piece at the end for the fabricator to put together. Mm -hmm. I did get those images. So that is one view there of the piece installed. We actually have that other piece being sent out to the field here soon too as well. That We actually have two sophists there. Looks like there's a few more questions coming in. How many drafters do you have with 10 million in annual sales? Chris wants to know. Uh, let me think about that. We have, um, I think we have six. Six. Plus okay. we also do, we do have to outsource a few, you know, once or twice a year, but we have about six full-time draftsmen here. And we, some of our project managers also have drafting uh, capabilities as well. Right. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to, to join us and to kind of give us some insights into what you do there and uh, the processes uh, related to the drafting that you have with your team. Um, Chris will be sticking around. So if you guys have some other questions, go ahead and chat those in and we'll see if Chris can get to those. Um, but I think now is a good time to switch over to Amy, who's going to continue on with the educational piece of today's webinar. We're going to be talking about uh, a lot of things related to how to configure AutoCAD and Microvellum uh, to maximize and streamline your Trudy drawing with the Microvellum. Uh, I'm trying. I have technical difficulties at the moment. It's frozen. <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, you're trying to get that loaded. Let me know when uh, you've got that figured out. Maybe you can log out and log back in. Uh, we've got a few other questions for Thomas, actually quite a few. Uh, good yeah. good uh, timing while you get that figured out. Uh, Rodrigo wants to know, how do you handle your curved or angled parts from a solid model? So it depends on the part. Uh, sometimes we'll have to, if like for some of these vertical pieces here, we'll have to lay them flat. And uh, if it's too angled, then we'll have to just kind of do a little bit of a, uh, of a, a detail drawing for that for the fabricator to cut it. But the curved pieces, um, the optimizer handle, handles that pretty well. So. Mm -hmm. You know, we draw it, we extrude it into as a 3D object, solid model or solid object, mm -hmm. and then run solid model analyzer on it, and it picks it up no problem. All right, we see your screen, Amy. We'll All right, you. so um, a little bit with before you start drafting, you have to know what you're putting into drafting. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how you gather the information before you put it in there. Um, what you put into microvellum, what you put into your drafting is what you're going to get out of it. You have to do a little bit of legwork to, to start with this. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is think about what the architect is giving us. Um, this will set you on the right path to be able to set up the correct project wizards, uh, different global variables and specification groups. You have to know what kind of hardware you're using. You have to know what kind of material you're using. When you have that information, it's very easy to plug it into microvellum, drop a cabinet in, send it out to the shop, and you're off to go. If you don't know what material you're using, you're not going to be able to make that cabinet. Um, also, if you kind of get into this up front, you know what information you don't know. So if you do not have your colors, if they just say, I want a pull, well, is it a four inch pull, a 96 millimeter pull? Is it stainless steel? Is it brass? There's a lot of information that you need to know that. If you don't know what kind of pull you're going to use, you don't know if you need to drill your holes. Can you turn your drills, your uh, pull holes off in microvellum? Yes, very easy. Click a button and you can still produce it. Um, so like I said, this gives you uh, either internal discussions. So some of this 3D stuff that um, he was showing us, I bet there was a lot of collaboration with the engineer designing it, the guy out the shop that was going to build it, how are they going to get it to the job site and install it. So you can look at it and say, here, there's a complicated uh, item in this. And, um, you know, how are we going to build it? Are we just going to kind of put it in 2D for right now? And then once we get field dimensions and red lines, we're going to turn it into something else. So it, it starts a lot of internal conversation with those. 
When I talk about architectural specifications, uh, most of y'all are probably familiar with the 600 page PDF that you get from the architect that has everything, all your plumbing specs, everything. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, there's 16 divisions usually in those um, architectural specs. Most companies will use number six, which is wood and plastics. So that's gonna tell you a lot of your different specs. Number nine is your finishes. That may spell out exactly, it's gonna be Wilson Art 7054-60 uh, for different colors. And then number 12, they'll kind of slide a diff few different things into furnishings, a lot of little odd items. Um, so definitely those are the three uh, that I'm used to looking at and going through and double checking and see what we need to put in um, to start off with microvellum. All right, here's an example of kind of what you would see. It's going to give you submittal requirements, material and core specifications. So you might need to use NAUF or FSC. Maybe everything needs to be moisture resistant. They may even call out that you need to use a certain brand as far as your material cores. Um, hardware specifications. As you can see right here, this is a very short list. Some of it's open-ended and some of it's very specific. Um, so for uh, the, the brackets, under counter brackets, it specifically says a racks countertop support bracket. Actually on this project, they drew all plastic laminate and then they told us that they were using metal ones. So you kind of have to, that's when you would say, hey, which one are we doing? Which one did we price? What do we need to draw into our, into uh, microvellum? Uh, right here, you have your adjustable shelf supports telling that you need form steel channels. So that means you need to do shelf standards versus the, the holes with the pins. Very easy, quick item in microvellum. There's a little checkbox inside of your project wizard that says, I wanna use shelf standards, but you needed to know that. So by the time you drew all of your cabinets, you drew all of your cross sections, you had all your drawings ready, and then they go, oh, well, we wanted shelf standards. So you know this up front if you're gonna go through this dimension or go through this uh, document. Drawer slides, very easy. Microvellum has ways of setting up different drawer slides. You can go into each different product and stuff. So definitely go in here and look at those different specifications. All right, um, let's see on our next one. A very good thing to do is go ahead and create some kind of co accompanying document to be able to follow through this. Whoever's developing this document, I would definitely say, think about what you need and how you enter it in microvellum. First thing that you open up is your project properties. You need to know what your job name is, what the job number is, what the address is, all of this stuff you can pull. And as long as everybody's in agreement, somebody's writing it down, you know what this information is. It's very easy to look at one sheet and type it in versus trying to chase down different documents to get it. Think about what needs to go into your title blocks, any kind of cover sheets. Now go to your project wizard. Project wizard, how high are all the cabinets? What kind of countertops am I using? Once again, am I going into my shelf standards versus my shelf pins? Um, then even further into it, if you need to go into global variables, maybe they're not allowing you to do dowels and they want you to do screws, or maybe you have to change to different kind of um, shelves. So they may say 30 inch shelves or wider need to be one inch material or thicker material. You need to set that up in your global variables. It's also gonna tell you what you need to change for your material specifications or if you have it set up. If they're asking for NAUF material, you may need to go to a different specification group or set something up inside of your materials that has NAUF material. The core thickness may di be different. The size that you can actually get the sheets may be different. Um, sometimes when they're asking for countertops and they want moisture resistant plywood, most of us can get particle board 30 inches by 112 inch or 144 inches. But can you get moisture resistant plywood? Maybe not, you can only get it in four by eights. So if you know your material limitations, that also allows you to know what your drafting limitations are also. Um, once again, it's gonna tell you what you're missing. So do you have three form? East Coast, it takes forever to get three form. So you might need to start that process a little bit earlier. If you're gonna have glass that needs different cutouts, maybe that's something you hurry up and draw first to be able to get it out. Um, once again, gives you the RFIs, different shop drawings. So maybe they say, oh, we're not, we're not gonna do it in a shop drawing, let's add it on a note. I'll show you in a little bit how to make these notes a little bit easier to add so that way in your drawing process, you can speed it up a little bit. Um, and we can discuss that custom uh, project creation. 
Here's a little bit of a sample checklist that I always try to use. Um, like I said, use what best is best for your company. Think about what you do. Do you use standard colors? Do you do standard hardware? Do you always follow the architectural spec? Do you never use an AUF or lead or anything and so you don't have to worry about it? So definitely do a document and everybody's on the same page. I'm pretty sure that with him having six different employees, everybody's gonna do it a little bit differently. So at least if you have one document, every employee is gonna stay around with that. All right, now that you know what you're actually starting with, what kind of materials and hardware, let's get to drawing. We know that microvellum is really quick at drawing your cabinet, drawing your cross sections, doing your elevations. It's amazing. All of its stuff is parametric. If you change anything, it's in your database, it goes straight in. So now that we know what to plug into the behind the scenes in the project wizard, in the material files, we can produce our cabinets. Now you need to enhance those shop drawings. You need to be able to tell your clients what you're building, how you're building, what the dimensions are of it, putting all the other information that's required on those drawings. Um, here's my quick speed setups. So there's different things that you can do to speed up the drafting process. Does it take you a couple hours? My thing, can I save you a second with each command? Think about how many times you click on your mouse or you go do something. If I can save you an extra second, I think I've calculated it up, I save you an hour in a week. That's pretty darn good. If I could get an extra hour every single week when I need to be able to draft something, think what that adds up to. That's another vacation day by the end of the year that I've already sped up everybody. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, this is a, just an AutoCAD option. You're gonna go to your toolbox setup and type drawing options. As you can see down in the command bar, it's just an options tab. You could, you could type in options down in your command bar. The, the three that I like to play with right here is my user preferences. This right click customization, I'm sorry, I have like three or four screens over here, so I'm gonna have to move a few of them. Getting in there and just repeating a last command. So if you're doing something over and over again, if you're just right clicking your mouse versus trying to go get it, or you pull up a shortcut menu and different things like that, all of these are set up per user. So maybe you prefer it to do one way and somebody else does it another. But set it up of what's gonna be best for you. How are you gonna speed things up? If you don't have to press one more button every single time and you can just repeat something, it's gonna speed you up a little bit. So play with these different options right here. Test them out, set them one way for a day, set them another way for the next day and kind of figure out what's going on with those. All right, the other one that you have here is your drafting. Right here, this auto snap marker size and your aperture size. There's a little thing that's gonna make them big and little. I watch a lot of people zoom their eyes into the screen and they're about two inches away because they're trying to pick something. One, AutoCAD has a zoom so you can zoom in a little bit closer. But if you have these snap markers a little bit bigger so that you can see them and see where you're pointing to and going, that's really gonna help you out pick apart really quickly, move apart really quickly, grab something instead of trying to focus in and try to figure out, can I see it? What am I grabbing? That kind of stuff. So definitely play with those two different sizes. You'll see a big difference. The next one is your selection ones. Same thing right here, your pick box and your grip sizes. Um, those are really gonna help. Same thing, if you're putting your nose up to the screen to be able to see something, play with those grip sizes and those pick boxes. Once again, there's other things inside of here that you can do some 3D rendering and stuff, but my preference is the user preference, drafting and selection. Play with those a little bit and I promise you're gonna catch a little, a few more seconds, which is gonna add up. All right. Next thing is setting up drawing templates. I actually saw one of these come through earlier today about adding some logos. Um, sometimes you print on 11 by 17s, but the architect needs 22 by 34s. Um, you want to add several different sheets and everything. So we're going to go over some of this, how to make your model space a little bit better. A lot of people say, well, what do my shop drawings need to look like? I've always, you know, just done a little bit. Everybody's been fine with it. Homeowners are okay, but now I'm getting into larger projects. Um, you're getting into more commercial work. You're getting into some of the work that we just saw that you're probably having to do a lot of, uh, you know, details and, and pointers, you know, that 3D sheet that he had just to show where your materials are going. Definitely go check out the AWI website. This is our governing uh, 
uh, body that tells us what we need to do as uh, architectural woodworkers. And it, they have inside their resource example shop drawings. Now I know that some of you are gonna look at them and go, oh, I can't do all of that stuff. You don't have to do all of it all of the time, but it does give you an idea of what you need to start working towards to put on your sheets. All right, so let's get started with adding a few of these options here. All right, the first one that everybody's asking is how do I change my logo and how do I change my title block? First thing you're gonna do is over here in this help tab, browse to factory database. And there's one called drawing templates. Find the one that you use normally. I also suggest right clicking and making a copy of it. That way you still have one working copy. That way if you kind of go in there and booger on one or maybe you need to really think about and develop it before you make it go live, go ahead and make a copy of it. Now the main thing that I want you to do is pay attention up here into the address bar. Sometimes if you have AutoCAD, it'll open it back up. Microvellum is sometimes picky about wanting to open an AutoCAD drawing back up. It'll restart your toolbox and everything. So I just tell everybody, kind of slide it down here, pay attention to where you're going. Now you're gonna go into your open your AutoCAD. Always make sure that you change this to DWT down here. If you go to wherever that location was and then go, oh, I need to change it to a DWT, it's gonna take you all the way back to this screen and you're gonna have to chase it back down again. All right, so let's see how far I have to dig down in here. I've got my microvellum. See how fast we can do that. Drawing templates. I'm just gonna open this generic. This is, I'm using the generic microvellum templates to kind of start off with. And now you can open this one back up. We're gonna go down here in one of our tabs. It doesn't matter which tab you go into because they're all using the same title block information. As you can see, when I click on some of these things, I'm going to go into your properties. Once again, right click on your mouse, go into some of your properties. It's a block reference and the block is title material information. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this title block right here. Once again, you can see it's a block reference and it's called title block. I want you to right click on that one and we're gonna go into this block editor. This is all AutoCAD based, nothing here with Microvellum other than Microvellum set it up for you. As you can see, Microvellum has their, their uh, item set up as another block reference, it's a DWG. If you don't have a DWG, or you have just you know different uh, PGP files or JPEGs or that kind of stuff, you can add those in. So what I want you to do, and here's one of those quick tip kind of things. What, what do I do to speed up? As you can tell up here at the top, I don't use toolbars. I use everything down there in the command, in the command lines. AutoCAD set up a little bit different depending on if you're the OEM or older versions or standard versions. I go to Tools, Customize, and this Edit Program. And I, I look at what all of these different symbols here to the left, I can just type those into my keyboard and I get the commands over here on the right. Um, I do believe that Clay was gonna try to put something in one of the comment sections. Um, Microvellum also uses some of these quick key things. So instead of trying to go in and do some uh, buttons and stuff like that, then you can learn what those quick keys are. Good thing about this is you can set it up. I customize my dimension continue. I set that up as DCO. I use it all the time. So definitely get in here, print it out, kind of pay attention to what you're doing. So I'm gonna type in image. So if you have a different DWG or something like that that you wanna bring in, um, you can bring it in here. I'm just gonna bring in an attach in image. I have a little cheater folder here. I'm gonna grab a lo uh, uh, my logo, and then you're gonna be able to put it in different insertion points, scales, that kind of stuff, and you can do okay. I always just kind of type one because I know what I'm doing. Cool thing about this is you can go back into your properties. I know that I needed about two inches wide to make it fit where I'm at. If you wanted to, you can turn it up 90 here. You can also just use your regular AutoCAD tools to rotate it. Um, another quick tool right here, I wanna find the middle of this. If you shift and right click on your mouse, you can do mid between two points. If I can keep mine on my highlighted. So shift and right click mid between two points. Why does my, it doesn't like me today. Right. 
Type the AutoCAD command, that would help. Mid between two points. So now I've got my center and I want to center it in between this block. Shift and right click. Do my mid between my points. And now I can have it. I can delete out this auto, the microvellum. If I wanted mine to be a little bit bigger, I can move this line up and down. Maybe you have bigger sheets or smaller sheets and you need to move those around. You can modify those as you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out and I'm gonna close my block editor. It's gonna ask me if I wanted to save, we can do save. And now I have my logo in there instead of the other one. Now the other thing to do is if you did have if you did have a DWG, you can do, or a block, you can do insert, you can browse, and you can find a block. I don't have another block that I can plug in uh, for the microvellum, um, but any of those inserts, you can insert a block that you've created and you can do that. So it really depends on what kind of format your logo's in. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this open because I wanna show you a few more things. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my room so I don't mess my template up too much. Um, once again, that's why you should probably make a copy of the one that you're working on so that you don't mess the one that you're existing on. Um, any copies and stuff like that, as long as you're doing it in that drawing database template folder, when you open up a new room, you're gonna have a list and now you can start selecting those from those lists. So if you wanna get rid of some things, I would say archive them, I wouldn't say delete them, um, but it will shorten that list if you have a whole bunch of different things. So down here in this plan view, maybe you need to have it a different size. Maybe you wanna name it something else. So I want you to right click, you can do rename, you can do delete, you can do the move copy. You can move it to the end or move it in the middle depending on where you wanna put it. So let's go ahead and move it to the end and create a copy on that one. I can right click, I can rename it. And now I have a secondary page to be able to copy those out. So maybe you need more. Maybe you wanna name them A1.01 or A1.02 or cross section or anything like that. Um, you can definitely set those up. So like I said, right now, Microvellum has them set up for 11 by 17s. Uh, I think at one point in some of the older versions, they had eight by 10s um, and 22 by 34s. You can do any of those. Maybe you need to change what kind of plotter or anything it's going to. So if we go to this page setup manager, you can modify one individually or you can create a new setup. So let's go ahead and modify this one. Right now I'm gonna print it to a PDF, it's a little bit easier, but you have all these different sheet sizes. So let's go ahead and go to a 22 by 34. Um, you can scale everything up or you can just tell it to print. We're gonna go two to one, not one to two. And then tell it to print. Maybe if you have custom pen styles or something like that, you can go ahead and set those up. Um, if you use an eight by 10, maybe you needed to rotate that so that it was a portrait view uh, and you could put it in a binder versus it being um, a side view. And as long as you do okay, you really can't tell if I was gonna print this out, it's gonna be on a 22 by 34. If you decide that you need all of your items or all of your pages like this and you don't wanna go in and create every single time, go to your page setup manager, you can do a new one and you can create a 22 by 34 and keep that one in there. And now you can just tell it to uh, make it current. So any of these, I can go in there. Other cheater method way of doing this, if you go to your publish, publish is gonna open up all the rooms, all the DWGs that you have right here. You can shift, there's red buttons and uh, green buttons up here. You can get rid of them. You can highlight all those. And now I can tell it, I want them to do 22 by 34s and you can publish out here. Uh, a lot of people ask me, do I do sheet sets and all that kind of stuff? I, I don't, I never really had the time to set them up. Uh, it takes a little bit. Some people are probably whizzes at them. Uh, Microvellum can teach you how to do that if you want to. So go ahead and, and ping somebody in the comments if you wanna be able to get in there and set those. For me, I can pick and choose which ones I want and be able to do the page setup. It's gonna go to a PDF right here. Um, so that's the way I do a lot of my, my plotting and, and speeding those items up. All right, let's go back to our model space. So Microvellum gives us this plan view and elevation view. Go ahead and close this buddy right here. If there's something that you do every single time when you set up drawings, 
go ahead and put it inside of this, inside of your drawing template. That way when it opens up every single time it's there. If you're working with six different engineers, everybody's gonna do it a little bit differently. If you can kind of focus them on where they need to do it. I worked with an architect one time and wherever it opened up that day is where he was drawing. So we would have a house up here and then we would have a garage addition down here. And then there's the trim detail of it drove me nuts because I never knew what it was because I was the second person picking it up, trying to follow along. A few quick keys here. You have your X line, which is like an infinity line. Uh, if you can see my command line down below, it says a horizontal or a vertical. Those are my two that I usually use. So you can do a horizontal, set it. I'm just going to type zero, zero, set it at the zero, zero axis. I can then see how I right clicked right there. I didn't have to type anything else. It was a right click on my mouse and I got that same command up there. I'm going to do a vertical one and I'm going to put it back in that zero, zero position. So I might put all my plan views at the top and all my elevations below this. That way when I draw a wall, it's going to match up down here when I put my elevation. I do a lot of my cross sections, sometimes depending on the way I'm in the mood for that day. I'll go ahead and set up a bunch of pre setup of my cross sections over here on the left. Or if I know that I'm going to have a lot of different ones based on what my elevations and, and uh, plan views are doing, I'll drag them across the bottom. To make sure that everything's lined up, yes, I'm, I'm one of those that's very anal about having everything lined up and matching. To me, it helps me see it. If I've made an error, that's where I'm going to catch it, is things are, are shifted off or not moving to the correct directions. So you can do e offsets on these uh, infinity lines. So let's go ahead and we'll do 300 because most walls are going to be 144. Now you can run all of your plan views up here, your elevations views down here, and cross sections that match it. All right, um, the other thing that we can do, let me jump back to my PowerPoint right here. All right, um, if you use a lot of details uh, or tables or some things like that that you're gonna use every single time, maybe you fill them out every time, but go ahead and create that table. That way the, the next guy doesn't remember, he might do all his fonts in Arial and you might do all of your fonts in Tahoma or everybody's a little bit different. Um, just go ahead and set it up and, and pull it right there. You can do a lot of this stuff in your drawing templates. So if there's certain ways that you do your dimensions or your dimension styles, um, you can go ahead and set those up. So uh, your dimension style, If you need to change what kind of text it is, what kind of arrows, points, um, let's see if you look at the, your lines. So you can do architectural ticks or points or stuff like that. If you set all that stuff up in your drawing templates, when you open it or any of the other users open it, you're gonna be using the exact same thing. So you're not gonna be able to tell that Jessica's drawings look different than Billy's drawings because they should all be your company standard and they should all be using the same thing. All right, my other little quick point, if I go into this drawing and I have it, or maybe Jessica's drawings are really, really awesome. I like those. I like the way that she has her dimension styles and I wanna incorporate them into my drawing template. A little quick tip is the um, AutoCAD Design Center. It's ADC or AD Center. We're gonna open this up. Sometimes it won't hold. All right, if you have different drawings that you have open, or if you need, these are the ones that I have open, or if you need to find one that you use, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. I already have different layouts inside of here. So I'm gonna take my cover and my floor plan layout, drag them over into the gray spot. Now in my drawing template, I have, I have this layout with all of my titles and everything that I've already designed inside of there. Maybe if you have different ways that you mark out your floor plans and you just need to have that information in there, you can transfer um, those pages over to that. All right. Um, the same thing with this design center. It's really cool. As you can see, you can do blocks, line types, uh, textiles, that kind of stuff to go ahead and go through there. All right. Go ahead and close out of this one. Let's pop back onto our... 
All right, this is kind of a secondary discussion. If you need some help setting up all your individual uh, library specifications, Microvellum can definitely help you out with that. There are some tutorials and stuff. What I want you to do is kind of start thinking about that. If every single time you're having to set up a specification and it's something you use every day, go ahead and put it in your library template. Think about what kind of work your cabinet shop does. Do you do fam the frameless and face frame? Do you do frameless all the time and ever once in a while do a face frame? Then maybe you're only gonna set up a frameless setup. And that way, because some of your globals and your door styles and all that stuff's gonna be different. Go ahead and set those two as different ones if you're gonna use them often. Um, do you have a specific catalog? So maybe you only, and as a residential company, you only do a paint grade or a stain grade. You don't get into plastic laminates or anything like that. Those are your only two options. Um, think about what your client is, especially in the commercial world. You may have hospital schools or restaurants. Hospitals and medical offices may have different requirements as far as their cores and stuff or the type of laminate that they put on those because they're hospitals. School setups most of the time have those stupid five knuckle industrial hinges that you have to put inside of there that need to be notched out. Everything is three millimeter on the doors and on the shelves and everything's three millimeters. So it's a completely different setup. If it's something that you do, go ahead and change it. A lot of those times the adjustable shelf clips are a little bit different. So your adjustable shelves have to change sizes. If you have a new employee, they might not know that. If you already have it set up in that specification and they just have to click school specification, they don't have to think about it. They don't have to know about those. If it's something that you do, if you've won a big client, a sheets or something like that, that you're, you're doing it all up and down the East Coast. Um, go ahead and set up something specific for the Sheets clients. They, you know that they're gonna use the same material over and over again, that you already have edge banding. You might have bulk pricing so that you can get different sheet sizes and that kind of stuff. So go ahead and set those up differently. Think about what you do on a normal everyday basis. If you could build in the way that you wanna build, how would you set it up? Do you always use a 96 millimeter pull or a four inch pull? Do you always use grass zargon drawer slides unless somebody in the architectural specifications are different? If somebody says, how can I value engineer it? What would you give them? Go ahead and set up that construction method because that's the way that you're gonna build probably 90% of the time. Think about what kind of jobs you have. Do you only have one or two colors? Do you have 10 or 12 colors? Do you only allow gray, white, and black? If that's what you need, go ahead and set them up and go ahead and have that information ready. The sooner you can grab it, Microvellum also has in their new setups a solid and a, um, a grain. So think about what kind you usually produce on those um, to be able to, uh, you know, do you need to set up different grained materials and different solid materials? That's gonna lead to different yields. It's gonna lead to the way that it's cut out on your routers or your beam saws or anything with those. Um, the other thing, once again, I said, when you were looking through your specifications for your materials, you need to know if it's lead or FSC or fire rated and stuff. One, you're gonna have to add those back in at your library template level if you're gonna start modifying them. Or is it something you don't use often, so you're gonna add it in at your project level. You need to know what your thicknesses are. You need to know what your material sizes are. If you're getting, um, sometimes the NAUF or the FSC melamine is only gonna come in a four by eight. If every day you use a five by nine and that's what you've ran all of your uh, G codes and nest on, someone's in trouble. No, it's just, now they're not gonna work. You're gonna have to rework it. Somebody's ordering a lot of material, that kind of stuff. So go ahead and know it. Remember what you put into it Microvellum will very easily produce it for you, but you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. So if you put in the wrong thing, it's not gonna work for you. All right, let's go back into our uh, drafting to kind of speed things up a little bit. Let's talk about different layer options. I'm gonna go ahead and open up another little test room that I had already started. There are a lot of different controls and stuff. Um, that I like to be able to use to be able to see things and to be able to present things. There are different controls that Microvellum has developed as their libraries get further along to be able to control some of these things. Um, some of the older versions do not have those controls. If I don't wanna see all these adjustable shelves right here, I'm gonna do lay off, I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna turn them off and I don't have to see them. If I don't wanna see my adjustable shelves, 
I can turn those off and I don't have to see those. Now, are there ways to turn those off in Microvellum up in the properties and stuff? Yes, there are. Maybe you just don't want to deal with them while you're trying to draw out all your drawings. You can just turn them off real quick. Um, I'll show you how to try and turn them off here in just a second in your, in your uh, printouts if you want to. Layer on is going to put them back over here. I'm going to go into a southwest view, take it into my hidden. Once again, there's different ways to be able to do this. I just do it up here in the left-hand corner. It's a little bit easier. It's a U-shaped room. I, I, I can't see what I need to. You could change the layer to the, of this wall. You can turn all your walls off. Now, if I needed to see inside of those cabinets, maybe they need to see you know, the adjustable shelves or you're working with a 3D design or something that you need to get in there and, and, and use a little bit more, see more information. I can turn those doors off and be able to see it. Now, a lot of people ask, Amy, there's that big cabinet. I can't see anything right here. Really cool thing that Microvellum has done. If you go up to other, select entire product. Now, the other thing too is I flipped my screen. So you can just drag and drop the Microvellum. Also in this toolbox, you can flip your strips. For me, I use everything on the left because I'm right-handed and it's very easy for me to grab my, t my uh, toolbox uh, shortcuts right here. Very rarely are you using things here on the right-hand side. So why go all the way over to the right? Like I said, one second, that's where I'm gaining my one second. I don't have to go over here and back, especially when you're working on multiple screens. Now back to the point that I was making over here on your blue uh, boxes, you have a folder and a star. And I want you to go down here and go to the one with the light bulb that's blue. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna click that tall cabinet, right click it and tell it to turn it off. Now I can see all of this stuff in here. If I wanted to grab four or five cabinets, I could do that. I did not erase it. It is not gone. It is still in the spreadsheet. It's technically still in the drawing. I'm going to go right here and tell it to turn it back on. I'm going to tell it to turn all my layers on by turning layer ISO. Also, if you don't know, Microvellum does Southwest, Southeast views. Awesome, awesome. So much better to be able to see those. Always make sure that you go back up here, go to your other and select that entire product and go back down in here. All right. The other thing that I want to show you is if you go into your plan views, A lot of people say, well, I don't want to see all the upper cabinets. I just need to be able to see the countertops or anything like that. Your plan view has your different viewports. I want you to double click inside of that viewport so that it's highlighted. If you click on this door and right click it, just go to quick properties. You don't have to go all the way to the full properties. It's going to tell you this is the 2D shelf layer. We're going to open back up our layers. I'm going to go to this 2D shelf layer down here. Now you have your on off, which is what we were doing in the original. If I use these two on off buttons, I'm going to turn everything off. I just want to be able to do it in this one viewport that I'm looking at. So there's a viewport freeze. I'm going to turn it right here. Maybe you don't want to do print your dimensions. Maybe this is just for a visual thing. I don't want to be able to do my dimensions. I want to see them right now, but there's a little tab right here to be able to plot and you can turn it to a no plotting layer. So even though you see it, you're, it's not going to plot later on. So a lot of different things that you can do with these layers. Um, as you can see in the new in the new library, a lot of these have a new colors to them where it used to just be white. Cool thing with this, if you go into your drawing template, delete all the things that say 2D and 3D, and you have the newer template that I just have, then you can use your AD, AD center and drag and drop those in there for your new layers and it'll repopulate with these new colors. If you don't have anything and you want to make up your own colors, you can go into your drawing template, go into your layers and modify those colors. You can modify different lane, line weights and line types and that kind of stuff also. Now that I've got those turned off, then you can, you can modify those. Maybe I don't want to see those uppers. Got a little happy with my click buttons right there. I'm going to right click it, go to my quick properties. Those are called 2D uppers. So I can go back into my layers. I can find my 2D uppers. Freeze them off of there. And now I've gotten rid of that. So you can turn it on and off. You can go all the way down to just showing countertops. 
you can have different dimension layers. So maybe you have a countertop dimension layer. Maybe you modify this to be your upper cabinet dimension layers versus your bottom cabinet dimension layers. You can do those and then you can also incorporate them into microvellum like he was saying with the different drawing tokens. You have the ability to go inside of the spreadsheets and tell it which one of those layers you want it to, to work on. It takes a little bit of time. It's not something that you're gonna be able to do the easy button, but it is very accessible to make it the way you want it to be, to make it look the same and make sure that six people are drawing the exact same way. All right. We're gonna go back. Um, there's a lot of different commands. Let me go pop back over here into our, um, so this uh, layer make current, uh, layer matching, anything. So if you're drawing a whole lot and you're on that zero layer, because we know everybody loves to learn to draw, uh, draw in a zero layer, you can make a, a different one current. So if you're drawing a whole lot of dimensions, make your dimension one current and it'll keep drawing it in there. You can do layer match. So if you've drawn everything in your zero layer and you're like, Ugh, I really needed that to be on the text layer, go find something on the text layer and tell it to match it. It's gonna match those properties for you. Um, makes it really, really nice to be able to do those. All right, blocks and tool palettes. So as he said, it took him about three months to go inside of there and develop all of the tokens and that kind of stuff. I understand the uses of those, um, let me show you what you can do with tool palettes. So once again, I type plan and go to my UCS for those. If I were to have a refrigerator or something in one of these spaces or a, an appliance, um, most of the time you need to know what that appliance size is. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a text box. And I'm going to tell it to verify appliance size. And I'm going to tell it that I have a certain give me my certain dimensions. As you can see right here, it's not the right size. I want you to right click on there, grab your properties, and we're going to change it to uh, an inch and a half. Now I have this block. Now, if you're inside of here and you're copying and pasting and that kind of stuff, it's, it's really easy. But now I open a new drawing and I wanna be able to use that. I'm gonna type tool palettes and it's gonna open this up. Now I wanna show you, AutoCAD automatically comes with a lot of these. These up here are new things that either Microvellum's added or I have added. I love to use these for, I have my plumbing, I have different, um, sinks inside of here, cross sections of sinks, different things that I use on a normal basis to be able to drag and drop into my drawings very quickly. Um, my hardware, so when I'm working on cross sections and stuff like that, I have some of these. So right now, you can go into your tool palette. I'm gonna, maybe. I'm gonna do a new palette. We're just gonna call it live, not lice, that's a bad one. Live right now. The, the key to this is to be able to make sure that everything is saved. So I'm going to go ahead and save my, my drawing. I'm going to click, I'm going to do a right block, which is W block. And I'm going to click on this one that I want to create a, uh, not break it. All right. So I'm gonna click a, a point. You can do a midpoint, left point. Wherever you click this at is where it's gonna drop it in there. So on my hardware, I try to have it, you know, if it's centered because I'm centering it in, if I have hinge plates or hinges, I make sure that it's, I can plug it onto uh, the drill hole inside of the cross section so that I know exactly where it's going. Go ahead and, and figure those out. So we're gonna go ahead and put this right here for a quick cheater one. We're gonna select our objects. Um, you can retrain it or convert it. You have the options to uh, be able to save it, whatever you want to. I'm just gonna save it as new block and we're gonna call it okay. Once again, this little star up here means it's not saved. We're gonna press save. We're gonna left click, right click. Once again, that right click gives me these options versus trying to go around everywhere. And I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go into that new tool palette that I had and I'm gonna paste it. So now I have this new block. 
So if I go back into my other drawing and I need this block again, I can just drag and drop it right in there and I can use those over and over again. So once again, I have cheater ones. I have my grass slides or my uh, grass hinges that I put in there. I have the brackets. I have casters, a lot of different things that you have in there. And as you go through, um, you can build these up. Cool thing about tool palettes is they are exportable. So you can customize that tool palette. You can export. If your friend has one, you can import them, you can share. So now everybody has those same notes. So if you're very specific on how you want uh, notes spelled out and everything, go ahead and set them up as a block and then put them in tool palettes for everybody. So it's really quick to go ahead and, and drag them. Now with blocks, you can do insert, you can go browse it and you can find same exact thing that I'm doing right now, except mine are all listed out. I have pretty pictures and I have names on them. Um, so this is what I usually do, uh, especially if it, you have a lot of cross sections and stuff. It's very, very awesome that he has all of those drawing tokens. If you don't have time to do those, go ahead and cut a cross section. Do all of your dimensions. See my DCO? Now I can just keep continuing right there. And no, I'm not to the right scale. This isn't right. If I put all my leaders and all of my names and my materials and all that kind of stuff, and I get rid of my cabinet, now I can write all of that stuff to a block, save it to a cross section. And next time I have that cabinet, I just drag and drop it. Um, microvellum's cross section for um, countertops. Sometimes do or do not match your manufacturing depending on what you've went in there with, a, with the um, uh, product and, and developed out and everything. So go ahead and draw your different types of, of countertops that you use. Um, as far as, uh, you know, solid surfaces and plastic laminates and quartz and all that kind of stuff, you can put all your hatching and everything and boom, it's a drag and drop slide. Um, hardware, like I said, uh, um, appliances, that kind of stuff can be put on there too. All right. Now the next thing is um, external files and images. So you can bring in the DWGs that he was talking about, different PDFs, JPEGs, and that kind of stuff. Um, and you can also do a copy and paste. So the difference between the two, a copy and paste, you're gonna get that image in that snapshot of time that you copied that image. If you do it as an external reference or an XREF, if you update the document that you're referring to, the next time you open AutoCAD, you can save, close, refresh, that kind of stuff. The next time that you open it back up, it's gonna have that updated information in it. Um, so if you get a new uh, floor plan and it's been updated, all you have to do is save over the other one and get the new floor plan. And now when you, up, when you open up Microvellum and you're referring to that floor plan, it's gonna have the updated version. A lot of people also use this for some of their specs. So if you know what your pull is and um, hardware, all your different hardware, and you have a PDF that has all that information in it, as soon as something changes, maybe they switched it from a four inch stainless steel pool to a four inch black pool. All you have to do is replace it inside of that PDF. Next time you open up your AutoCAD, that PDF is gonna be updated for you and you didn't have to think about it. So um, one document that maybe the project manager is managing, it now is incorporated into your drafting and the information that you're pushing out. And nobody has to say, oh, well, did you add it? Did you remember this? Or I forgot to forward you the email or anything. You can do those um, things in between there. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'll go ahead and close my tool palette right here. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is an XREF. So you just type down there in the bottom, you have an XREF. Once again, up here at the top, you can do a DWG, an image, uh, a PDF. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach a DWG. This is a random one that I pulled out, so I apologize if it looks a little weird. It's a big one, it's house plans. But say you get house plans, and now you need to go in here and you need to, um, It's probably a very big file that I shouldn't have put in there. So they send it to you from the architect and they're like, we want you to build this kitchen. 
as he was saying, you have this to that exact size now. You don't have to worry about pulling out your little ruler and printing it out. Was it printed to scale? Did they not do it as a PDF or anything? You have this information right here that you can be able to do this. Um, just for, I'm gonna detach it because it is a pretty large file. Um, and then you can also, like I said, attach a PDF. You can do different rotations and scales and that kind of stuff on these. Oh, I'm in hidden view. So now I have what it has on the architect. So if I need to come in here and highlight that we're doing this room, you can, you know, create rectangles and you can add your hatching to it. Maybe you have trim in this area right here and you need to do lines and trim. And that way you can tell your installers or your delivery crew or the architect or somebody can look at it and be like, oh, you forgot this room up here because you don't have it highlighted. Um, so definitely try to use those as much as you can. Let me go ahead. I'm going to sneak over here. Maybe this is the pool that we want and you don't want to worry about trying to do X drafts or keeping up with it. Um, I also, sometimes this is how, how I'll ask questions or whatever. Favorite tool. Um, you can use this in Word documents and emails or anything like this. This is that little snipping tool. So if you actually go to your, um, your search button right here and you type in snipping tool, most all computers are going to have this app. It's going to open it up and you can do a new one. And now just grab this information right here. I'm going to highlight it because we're going to use the brush nickel on this job. I want you to go back into your AutoCAD. I'm going to do control V. I'm going to paste it. And so now when I'm doing any of my documentation, all I have to do is scroll over there and say, hey, are you sure you're using this pool in here? That's how you're going to be able to share and confirm that documentation that from the very beginning of this, we were able to, um, to look at and, uh, and decide, are you really wanting this one? So a lot of times the specs will have one pool and then the drawings will do another pool. You can put both of those pools in there and say, hey, architect, which one of these did you want? There's your answer right there. And now you know what you didn't know beforehand and you can plan ahead that way, what you put into microvellum is what you're going to get out of microvellum. All right, let's go back to our PowerPoint again. Dimensioning, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but there's a, so much more that you can go to, to dimensions. Um, microvellum has gotten, has added a lot. I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, so as the years have gone, microvellums put in more dimensions, things that can come in here, but maybe there's a little bit more that you want to do, or you've drawn this really weird shape. You have your typical dimension linear. You have a dimension radius. Dimension diameter. The other cool ones that are kind of cool is if you were to do another dimension linear on this one, it's just going to give you this. If you do a dimension aligned, you're going to get one uh, difference. You can do a dimension angled, and it's going to throw that angle on there. A lot of people say, Amy, I, I don't have any inch marks beside of my stuff. I want you to find out what dimension style that is. You can click it, go to your quick properties. It's going to tell you it's a 3 8 inch normal. You're going to go to your dimension style, modify it. Here, this suffix right here, I'm going to add inches to it. And now all those have inches. If you decide you like that, once again, you can push that up to your template and you're always going to have it. You're not going to have to open up every single job and make those changes every single time. Go ahead and set it up. Same thing with fonts. Maybe you don't like the font that it starts out with. Go ahead and set that font. If you have a company standard, set it up. Um, like I said, once it's in that, that drawing template, it's going to make things a lot smoother. It's going to make everybody's stuff look the same. Um, all of those dimensions that I, I just did, you have those options up in here. There are other ways to do that, um, and there's a little, a few more. Those, would say, I would say, are my, the ones that I use most commonly. 
Um, next one, we're going to go back up here. Dimensioning in paper space and then modifying those. Um, I'm going to go to the 3D drawing. So another cool thing. Another cool thing with your 3Ds um, that some people don't know about is, and this is kind of separate, is there, it's called a 3D clip. And you can actually turn on and off clipping planes and walk through that stuff. So if you needed to see on the inside of that room or you were working with walls or something like that, use these different clipping paint planes to be able to get in there and get different views. There's other ways to do that. Uh, there's different renderings and camera views and that kind of stuff. Uh, this is kind of what I've found to kind of be the easiest. You have to play with it a little bit, but adjusting the clipping planes is something that's, that's really cool. Um, I am gonna go ahead and take this to a front view. It was, it was pre-set up, so it was a little bit different. Hold on one second. Let me get where I'm going. All right. Now, when you want to do it in paper space, let's have some more 3D things or we're visually going forward. We're going to change our scale to a full scale right here. And then you can just do a normal dimension linear and pop that in there. Because my view is not correct, it's not going to give me exactly what I'm wanting right here. Um, but you can pop your dimensions. If my view was correct and I'm, I'm going in there and everything is head on, it's going to give you the straight head on dimensions. Um, anything that you want to do in paper space, you can add notes and stuff like that inside of paper space. Let's go back down to these dimensions right here. Maybe I need this one to say as a hold. So I want you to edit the text. So it's just, it's just an ET for your dimension. You can go back here and you can do a hold. The other thing that is really cool, um, if you go in to right click inside of here and go to symbols, you can do a plus and minus. If you get in here and actually didn't only delete all that stuff out and you don't have anything inside of that dimension, if you go back in here, the uh, little angled brackets, I don't know what they are, but they're by the N and the M key on your keyboard. If you do one of those open and close, it's going to pull that dimension back. So if you went in there and pencil whipped it and that's not what you wanted to do, you wanted to go back to that actual dimension, um, that's how you're going to go back and forth inside of there. So any of these are, are you can go in and modify with different commands and stuff like that or any kind of notes and stuff that you want to be able to add inside of those. All right. A few different other things that speed this up. Like I said, picking a cabinet, dropping it in there, that kind of stuff. That's what microvellum can give you. How can you enhance that? How can you make your drawings better? How can you pick up your speed? Um, like I said, we had talked about the microvellum quick commands. Put as many things as you can on there. If you're not having to go back and forth, we'll just hop back over there. If you're not having to go to modify and to modify products and to bump your products or move your products and you're staying inside a draw and you're keeping it right here, you're going to pick up that speed because you're not having to, like I said, it may not be a whole lot, but if you start adding a bunch of seconds up, it's going to start adding up. Um, we've talked about the X line to be able to do your infinity lines. This really helps with keeping things organized and lined up. You can use it in paper space. So that way, if you need to align floor plans and elevations and cross sections, just shoot those over and then delete them back out. But it's going to give you straight lines without trying to actually draw a line from different points to points that may be off. Um, if you want to go from point to point and you want it to be straight and F8, if you're in the middle of a command, you're moving a cabinet or something like that, if you do your F8 button on and off, it's going to change your orthos. Your shift and right click, I kind of showed you this when I was trying to find the uh, midway between two points. Let's go back over here. Let's go to my southwest view. If I want to find the end of this, I've grabbed something. 
I really need to find like the center of that dowel, but now I'm moving around. It's jumping to perpendiculars and all that kind of stuff. I want you to hold your shift and right click button again and let's find the center. Now it will only find centers. It's not going to find all those endpoints and the midpoints and all that kind of stuff. It's going to find that one center point and I'm going to be able to move that. So when you're in any kind of command, that shift right click is going to be able to get you and just narrow those down a little bit more. Um, once again, speed, you're not having to sit there worry about moving those around. The other thing you can notice is with my pick points, my green box, those are all modifiable. So if you have a little bitty tiny green box and you don't know where you're picking at, or if you have a really huge one and you can't see everything around them, that's one of those things that we did at the very beginning. All right. Copy versus copy base point. Um, so copy, if you just want to move things over, you know, copying a, um, a, a piece of text or something like that. If you really want to know where you're going with something, go ahead and do it with a base point. A base point, you're going to highlight it, right click, and you can copy with a base point. And if you select it, now you know that you're, you're going to paste it exactly on that, that same point. So you're not trying to worry about, oh, did I get it at the floor? Did I get it at the top? The other really cool thing about um, doing it with a base point, if I select this and I go back into another room, I can paste it over here. You can't do that with a normal copy. So if you need to share things back and forth between drawings, if you do a copy with a base point, you can move those back and forth. Um, with those items. Let's go back over here. Um, we had kind of talked about that PGP file. You can modify those. You can figure out all the quick things. Like I said, I'm, I guarantee you, if you start using your command bar, um, and, the, and the cool thing is, is now AutoCAD's gotten a little bit better, um, that you can go in here, and if you start typing something, it's going to give you a bunch of different options, and then you can just actually click on those. But if you knew that you wanted to do copy, you could go ahead and do an enter button on there, and it's going to speed it up a little bit more. Um, did you know that Microvellum now has the uh, capabilities to add soffits and columns in their new library? Really cool thing. It helps you with trying to get your drawings correct, um, for, uh, giving you the right information of what is out into the field. You can also, in most of the standard libraries, you can add doors and windows um, to your drawings. So once again, it allows you to give something to pull measurements off. It gives you a real world drawing to say, hey, there is a door or window here. Hey, project manager, make sure you field dimension this because we have different holds and stuff. Um, you can go into those using product prompts. Let's go back over to my room. There are prompts for, for uh, room components. I just always use product prompts because it's going to do the same thing for you. So inside of those walls, if you get your field dimensions back, and they are not 108 inches and they're, you know, 96 inches. You can modify it here if it wasn't already set up. Maybe it went to a 12 inch CMU wall. You can modify those. Like I said, it uh, this new library has the options to do bulkheads or columns. Really, really cool because now you don't have to worry about two different sizes of walls and moving them. And once you change the size, it's not moving it. You go back and forth. It's going to add those in there. Windows, doors. You can also uh, modify some of those drawings if you want to. So definitely a really cool improvement that they've done that will also enhance your, uh, your shop drawings. All right, product list. And like I said, a lot of people go, do you mean Overdrive Pro? That's what we called it in the olden days was Overdrive Pro. It's now called product list. That's what you're gonna be able to see it. Um, so in your project, product list, you get back field dimensions and you need to change the uppers. I would prefer you to go into your project wizard if you have some of those controls and stuff like that. But really quickly, maybe they changed all of their um, countertops into this one as a two inch height. So I can sort my material or my uh, uh, products by description or I can just sort it by height right here. I'm gonna shift and click, right click, go in here. I'm gonna change the height. We're gonna go ahead and change it to 34 inches. You can change all your spec groups if you need to. You can do renumbering. Do a lot of this stuff right here into the spreadsheet. 
then you can go back in and tell it to redraw all these products. I'm not going to have it do it right now because then it's going to slow down the system and everything. Tell it to redraw because it's database information. Um, it's going to go ahead and ch make those modifications for you. But instead of going into product prompts for each one and changing the heights and stuff, figure out if you can do it through project wizard or through product list. Um, also, you can add products here or copy products to other rooms. So if you had an exam room, this is another way to be able to use it. If I had this room, but I needed to put it in another phase or in another floor of a drawing, I can tell it to grab all those, right click, and copy those selected products into another room, and we can just copy it back up there. If you get it inside of there, you can go to product viewer. They're all right here. If they're green, that means it's in the spreadsheet and not in your drawing. You can just tell it to right click it, draw that product and you can draw it back into your drawing. So that might be a faster way. If you've already got one set up, go ahead and use it. Group products, that's another great one. So if you're doing exam rooms or classrooms or something like that, um, maybe if you have you know, the, the sheets or the publics or something like that, and that's what you're, they're using the same cashier station every single time. Go ahead and either create it as a custom product or if there's several, create it as a, a group product. And now you're just dropping that same thing in over, over and over. So like I said, if Jessica did it one day and she's drawn this whole elevation, now Billy can get in there the next day, go grab that elevation out of the group products and he doesn't have to think about it and you can make sure that you're manufacturing them the same exact way using two different engineers. All right. Draw, develop a drawing system. I don't know how many times y'all get interrupted a day, probably a lot, or you finished up a job on Friday and you get in Monday morning and you're like, hmm, I forget where I stopped at. How much time do you waste trying to go back and figure out where you were at? Sometimes you have to put it down. There's a hot button item, you put it down, you go to your, uh, that project for two weeks and then you come back. Where was I at? Or you had to hand it off, you got sick, you went on vacation, um, you're handing it from a junior engineer to a senior engineer. Somebody else may have to look at it. If you go ahead and get your template set up so that everybody's following it, develop a workflow. Yours doesn't have to match mine. This is just a suggestion. I draw all my walls. That way I know I have all my rooms account accommodated for. I have it highlighted inside of my floor plans and I know what I'm doing. Then I drop in all the ca cabinets. Then I'm gonna do all of the elevations because if at any point I forgot to do something or I need to change a standard or an RFI comes back, I'm not having to recreate a whole bunch of things. I'm not having to redo floor plans to elevations to cross sections. I'm, I'm only doing my floor plans because that's the only thing that I have created. Then I do all my labelings and notes and that kind of stuff. Then I run all my cross sections. How many people run cross sections and it's on the half inch scale because you forgot to change it to the inch and a half scale and now your dimensions are crazy? Or same thing, you just did a cross section at an inch and a half scale and now you're going back and dropping cabinets in a floor plan and everything's an inch and a half scale because it was supposed to be a half inch scale. This kind of eliminates it because you're using the same commands, the same scales and stuff as you're going through these. So if you look at it and there's no cross sections on your job, you know that you're not complete with your job. If you're doing a plan view, elevation view, cross section, how do you know that you didn't get that third room, that you forgot on Friday that you were supposed to add that other one and you didn't finish it? Um, so just kind of set up some kind of, um, some kind of workflow that, that you know what you're doing and it's, it's really gonna speed you up because if you think about it, why are things on assembly lines? Because somebody's doing something over and over and over and over again and it speeds up the process. So if you can do floor plans, floor plans, floor plans, dimensions, 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 cross sections, cross sections, cross sections, it's going to speed things up a little bit more. So I am wrapped up over here. I would love to know any questions or anything. I, uh, my screen's been popping up on the side, so I know that there's been some great comments going on. Um, and then I want to know, because I always like to learn, what's your favorite speed thing? What, what do you use? What other commands have I not said that it's really going to, like I said, if you can save me a second, that is a great tip. All right, Clay, I think I'm wrapped up. So if you want to take okay. control and get some questions going, that would be great. Yeah, we do have some questions that have come in here. Uh, I want to start with one of the first ones that we had a bit ago. Um, he was asking about, Kenneth was asking about Sheet Set Manager in AutoCAD and asked if you use it. 
I personally do not. I just, I never had the time running and managing the engineering group to be able to do it. Like I said, my personal, I just do publish. I know that there are other links. Um, the projects that I worked on were less than three months turnaround. I didn't have the six month and year projects just from the company that I was working with. So no, I, I personally do not. Right. Good. And as uh looks like Gary commented, she said is great for larger projects as well. So that's good. Yep. There was another question. It's kind of a long one um, from Tyler. I told him that we would try to get to it live and he, he, he can probably see that there, but he asked one thing I've been trying to accomplish is for example, let's say you have a galley kitchen on one layout you would like to have to show each elevation from a 3D view in two separate viewports. What is the best way to accomplish this? Hope that makes sense. Um, so, so I just copy the one, uh, you can select a viewport and then right click and tell it to copy and paste and you can grab a new viewport. So um, let's see, one layout, you show the elevation from the 3D view in two set. So, okay, so if you were doing a Southwest view and then a Southeast view. So you're just gonna copy paste, create two viewports and you're gonna set one up coming from a Southwest view and you're gonna create another one from a Southeast view. So it, it's just controlling those viewports. Same thing if you're doing a lot of 3Ds from your galleys. Um, so I think you're wanting maybe a front and a back view. So even when you go in there, do your fronts and your backs, use your 3D clipping planes to be able to get through those cabinets and be standing in front of a cabinet versus you know behind a wall. Um, so definitely play, copy in your viewports and play with your 3D clipping and your orientation. There's a little box in, um, and AutoCAD that says top left, right, bottom and stuff. And that's gonna position you inside of those. All right, great. So Tyler, hopefully that answers your question there. Let me skip that one. Um, Rodrigo had a question about XREFs. I think he asked it in a chat uh, earlier, but maybe okay. you can see that one there. Just scanning through some of the other questions. Oh, the bottom okay. One. So if you've if you've started off with one and maybe copied it or put it into your drawing templates and stuff like that, um, you can just go in there and detach those. Um, there's also you can go in there and associate them. The other thing is if you go down inside of the properties, it'll tell you the path. Um, so maybe you've moved that information or you've archived those folders um, or you've you've. Uh, I mean, I face this a lot I, when I export drawings out to different companies and stuff and they're like, oh, I can't do it because they've saved it into a different path. There's three little dots down there by the old path and you can click on that and you can find the new path and repoint it. So I'm not quite sure like what he's, what the problem is, uh, but definitely doing the different paths and stuff like that is, is I think will help him out. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, I think that's about all the questions um, that we have that came in. Troy, you do have a question there. Um, maybe just a comment. Maybe we can get to that one afterwards. Uh, so yeah, um, I think we're going to wrap it up for today. Lots of great information we covered today and definitely some great tips that help speed up your drafting. And we had a lot of great questions as everyone can see here coming in. So um, let's see here. And in fact, if you wanted to uh, learn more about drafting and you are coming to our user group, our user uh, conference happening here in May, you'll be able to hear from Amy again as she's going to be covering this topic uh, at TechCon. And for those of you not registered for TechCon yet or want to learn more about this event, you can visit our website at microbellum.com forward slash TechCon. You can check out the schedule, uh, chat with other attendees who have re registered, and you'll even have access to our ideas portal that's uh, gonna be available shortly. It's a new way for you to share ideas with, with other users to talk about features you'd like to see in an upcoming release. And then we will chat about the, the top uh, features, the top uh, items that made that list at the developer conference on the last day of TechCon. So that's uh, something to look forward to as well. And with TechCon happening just one month and four days from now, uh, rooms at our preferred hotel are filling up and registrations for our block will be closing this Friday. So. If you have not reserved your room yet, you still have a few days left. Um, so go ahead and check that out. You can find the links to those hotels on our website as well. And you can see the link there um, that Jessica added there to the chat panel for us. So great, uh, another great uh, episode today, live webinar. And we appreciate each of you taking the time uh, for joining us here today. 
And on behalf of our team here at Microbelm, I'd like to thank you. And we'll catch you next time on our next Microbelm Live event.